They might not be the best looking birds, but vultures are some of the hardest working animals in the wild. They're highly efficient and discreet scavengers, vital to the ecosystem. But they're a threatened species, their numbers dwindling at a startling rate. For years, Volpro, a wildlife sanctuary in the northwest, has worked hard to save these birds from extinction. It's work that's showing enormous success, so much so that the sanctuary itself had to spread its wings, breaking records in the process. <laughs> This is Percy, a Cape vulture, a threatened species with only around 10,000 individuals left in the wild. As he sits here, perched in his new home in the Eastern Cape, he seems blissfully unaware of the vital role he has played in the conservation of African vultures. Having a vulture chick in your hand, you understand the fragility of the species. Over two decades ago, Baby Percy sparked an idea for what would become the largest vulture conservation NGO on the African continent. And in a roundabout way, he's the reason I find myself in the Eastern Cape, about to witness history in the making. I'm on my way to Shamwari Private Game Reserve with one of my regular road trip companions, cameramoman Alti. Known internationally for its five-star hospitality, the reserve is home to the Big Five. Oh, a little skill bike is in the road. A tortoise. Oh. Let's try and get this guy off the road so that he doesn't get run over. We don't like to see that happen. Baba, baba, go live your tortoise life. We've been invited to the unveiling of a new project here in collaboration with Vulture Conservation NGO Volpro. Good afternoon, Mac. How are you? Mind your head. <laughs> Jean Tort is Assistant Safari Operations Manager and our guide for the next two days. Thank you. All right, so my rifle in the front of you here. Please do not touch. This one is for you. All right. Uh, <laughs> this is all I get. You got a rifle, I get a stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's the stick of truth, that one. <laughs> are you ready to go? I'm good. Perfect. Let's make our way. <laughs> this is 25,000 hectares of privately owned land with an impressive conservation history. So the reserve was established in 1992, so we are now heading into our 32nd year. 32? Oh, OK. Yes, so proud to say we're the first private game reserve in the Eastern Cape. And there's constantly new stuff happening. OK. It's a fairly cool day for this time of the year, and the felt is teeming with herbivores, enjoying the lush vegetation after some much-needed recent rain. That springbok looked a little bit alert earlier. Alti is brav, ne? While Alti does a quick equipment check, Jean keeps a lookout for whatever might have spooked the springbok. You think they might be hunted? Yeah. In the distance, a warthog family makes a run for it. Clearly, something is lurking in the tall grass. There. What line? Nope, something different. We head towards a slight copy in the distance. There they are! There they are! Good job. Wow. Die. Two beautiful cheetahs surveying the landscape. How cool is that? Oh, man. Look at them through there. Gorgeous. While this is starting to feel very much like a holiday safari, we didn't come here for the cheetahs. We're here for Percy and his friends. So this is the cleanup day. These guys know the secrets of what happens out in nature, who took out who, who killed who, because after every kill, they come in and clean up. These are critically endangered white-backed vultures, endemic to sub-Saharan Africa. Once common and widespread, their numbers have declined by over 90% since the 1980s. But these specific birds are key to slowing the slide towards possible extinction. This is the first phase 
um, of a two-year project. Kerry Volta is the founder and CEO of Volpro. This is my boy. Is this Percy? This is him. Ah. Kerry's journey in vulture conservation started 21 years ago with Percy. I had him from 10 days old. Um, and he did extensive education and awareness work um, with me until he decided he had enough. Do you guys have a bit of a relationship though? Yes, but I still won't touch him. Oh, is it? <laughs> no. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. When he bites, he bites. Volpro was established in 2007 and focuses on vulture rehabilitation as well as captive breeding and reintroduction programs. Vultures can withstand anything pretty, pretty much thrown at them from a natural point of view, from diseases, from viruses, from anything. What they can't withstand is when man comes into play. We cannot anymore just protect vultures in their natural habitat. We need to do more because of the rate of decline. After almost two decades, it was time for Volpro to spread its wings, as it were. But moving 163 white-backed and Cape vultures across the country was no easy task. When they came to and said that they wanted to relocate 163 birds from Harties all the way to the Eastern Cape, your heart must have skipped a beat, right? Yeah, more than one beat. We actually didn't start at 163, we started at 140. Yeah. And then Carrie kept adding one or two. Mm. And eventually I was like, I got there and they're like, oh, it's 162. And then I found an extra one and it was 163. <laughs> Professor Kacha Kupel from the University of Pretoria was in charge of the birds' welfare. Because even though vultures are naturally accustomed to travelling great distances, this trip was very different. We have less than two minutes a bird between catching, putting it in the, in the box and onto the truck. The entire operation took about 18 hours and is said to be the largest vulture relocation ever undertaken. There was a lot of logistics. And then, you know, how many boxes do you fit? How, what's the dimension of the box? How do we put it onto the truck? And then we needed to have ventilation going. We need to make sure that the birds wouldn't overheat and start stressing because on a long trip, that's not ideal. Shamwari veterinarian, Dr. Johan Dubert, was hands-on during the process. We always think medical treatment, but in wildlife prevention is much more important than anything. And we must anticipate problems. Once the trucks were loaded, they set off on a nerve-wracking 1,000-kilometer journey. So every two to three hours, we stopped and we checked the birds. We looked through the holes with torches. We checked that they were OK, that nobody was getting too cold, too hot. Everybody was settled. The trucks with their precious cargo arrived at Shamwari around noon on the 22nd of January. Yesterday, when we started releasing this birds, that was an extremely special and emotional moment for all of us. This new Volpro facility consists of four large enclosures to cater to the specific needs of each group. These are the Cape Vulture breeders that should start producing eggs by April. Since there are virtually no wild Cape Vultures left here in the Eastern Cape, it's up to Percy and his friends to produce a new generation and new hope. Now, birds that, that get extinct in a, in a specific area and we bring them back, it's, it's very special. Personally, I, I, I didn't like the idea of animals in captivity or birds in captivity, but this is different because the offspring is going to repopulate the area. For Shamwari CEO Joe Tluter, this collaboration is a no-brainer. Bringing 163 vultures back to Shamwari or back to the Eastern Cape you know, is as important as 163 black rhino or 163 wild dog. It's just part of the greater conservation journey that we've embarked on for the last 32 years. So, okay, how do you get to Shamwari? You know, why specifically Shamwari? As a non-profit organisation, you look at partnering with an organisation that has a, a very good reputation, mm -hmm. but that is stable, secure, now and into the future. You know, because what we don't want to do is relocate, and in a year or two years' time, there's insecurities. With our time at Shamwari coming to an end, Jean has one last surprise in store. Here we have the pre-release camp, okay. which is going to be the birds first to set wings 
and be able to call the skies above Shamwari their new home. So we are careful out, to not disturb to these birds. They have been successfully rehabilitated and should have as little human contact as possible. Very soon, they will fly again. Of course, one of the important things that they need is height. So up oh. here, it's perfectly situated on top of this hill because there's good wind always up here. And then the next important thing is, if you look over there in the distance, there's a beautiful cliff face, which ideally, if all goes according to plan, yes. these cave vultures are going to settle mm -hmm. on there and they're going to start breeding in the area. Who knows? In the not-so-distant future, one of Percy's offspring may just decide to call this home. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.